Welcome back to the Sea Morning Show, everyone. This is the second edition of Sports Talk for this morning. We're going to talk all about game one of the NBA Finals between the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics, where the Boston Celtics have taken a 21-point lead here midway through the second I quarter. I know. They're playing right now, and it is a big surprise. We are wearing green right now, but that doesn't mean I'm we are I'm a Mavs. I'm, I'm a Mavs that. guy, too. I know. <laughs> but we're wearing green. I don't know why. It's not a St. Patrick's Day. But to break down the first game and discuss the possible outcome. Joining us yeah. today uh, in the studio is Box Out Indonesia pundit Mutia Wiro Sastro. Welcome. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning, guys. It's Muthia. good to be here. Yeah, great yeah. to, great for to have you me. here. <laughs> Obviously, we're all trying to catch the game in between That's all of right. these discussions as well. I think well. you're watching it right now. I am. I've got it on yeah. right now. It's during a break. But listen, let's start with Boston. Yeah. We know that the Celtics finished the regular season with 64 wins. Mm -hmm. um, they beat the Miami Heat and the Cavaliers in five games each before sweeping yeah. the Indiana Pacers on their way to the finals. They've been to the, they're no strangers. They've been to the conference finals 10 years. Uh, they've been to the playoffs 10 years yeah. straight made it to the conference finals six of the past eight seasons as well. They lost the finals just two years ago. Mm -hmm. Is this the, um, the finally the uh, best, I guess the best iteration of the Celtics that we've seen this past decade, yeah. in your opinion? I think, I would say, uh, because uh, I guess the next best thing would be the 08 Celtics, just mm -hmm. over the decade ago. Mm. And, um, but I would, I would say, I wouldn't put too much thought about the 64 wins in the regular season because okay. Mavs are beating uh, Phoenix Suns as well, my yeah. team. <laughs> Phoenix True. Suns a um, couple of seasons ago. So I would say regular season compared to uh, playoffs, whole different ball game, as you know, Paul mm -hmm. and Ralvi. And so um, it's the best uh, iteration of um, Celtics for past decades because of how complete they are. So. Um, Depth, I think, is the name of the game if we're talking mm -hmm. about Boston Celtics right now. And um, even without KP, mm -hmm. uh, in the better part of a regular season, right? Because um, he's not playing for the last, I think, 10 games or so, right? Yeah, so the yeah. postseason. Yeah, he's over a month. yeah, so I guess um, they're better in that way, it, the, the way uh, they're good in their depth and rotation. Mm -hmm. But not so much if we're talking about how well they perform in a regular season compared to what they are in a championship series. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. But let's talk about one of the keys to Boston's success this year mm -hmm. is the partial revamp of their roster. Yeah. You know, uh, including the addition of Kristaps, uh, Porzingis, and also Drew Holiday mm -hmm. to the roster. And are they, you would say, key pieces needed? to win the series, mm. the finals, to bring Boston that elusive title number 18, right? If I'm not mistaken? Yes. <laughs> number 18. Yeah. I mean, we're watching the um, first half of the game one right now, and Christoph Forzinger is shooting the lights out. Coming and off the bench. Coming off the bench, exactly. So if we're talking about those two additions, obviously, if we're talking Drew first, I think um, the way um, it is now with Drew and um, you know, Derek White, mm. they're both they're both so good on both ends. Yep. Um, they can play uh, guard, guard, pick and roll. Mm -hmm. And um, they're they're all in the all defensive second team as well. And Drew Holiday, I think he's the biggest loss Milwaukee Bucks had, you know, uh, coming to the season as well. And I think Bucks supposedly um, building around Drew Holiday. I mean, that's that's a very brave take compared to what they got, just Damian Lillard. Mm -hmm. Still, I guess Drew Holiday has been, you know, has been very consistent as well. And um, yeah, I think um, losing them is going to be yeah, a, a very great um, loss for Boston Celtics. And so Drew Holiday and Derek White is good for uh, both guards as, you know, as good uh, in both defensive and, and offensive ends. And Christopher Zing is, I think, while he did his soul searching in Washington Wizards, he's mm -hmm. now being one of the best um, post-up shooter as well um, before um, he got injured and now it's the case whether it is rest versus rust, right? Correct. Because he's throwing no rust right now. He's, 11 he's points. No <laughs> right now. But um, we're talking about seven game series. Yep. So um, Dallas Mavericks and we're probably we're getting into that later but um, Dallas Mavericks, I don't think uh, it's the type of team that we can only count by Luca and Kyrie mm -hmm. on all that, especially on postseason because yeah. everyone's showing up as well. We're talking about Celtics eight man rotation, yeah. but we cannot count uh, Dallas out I yeah. think, in terms of, you know, the, the next four to five yeah. players. You're absolutely right when it comes to uh, Drew Holiday and Derek, Live, uh, Derek, um, White. Derek White being 
two of the best on-ball defenders in the game right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But let's go to the other duo, the obvious one, the Jays. Jalen Brown, the Jason Jays. Tatum. <laughs> Jay, obviously, Jason Tatum was in the running for MVP in the regular season. Mm -hmm. But Jalen Brown was the one that took home Eastern Conference right. Finals yeah. MVP honors. Mm. Uh, no jealousy there between the two, <laughs> I'm sure. But who do you think is more key in this series against the Mavs? Jason or Jalen? Yeah, for this series, um, I think I'm going to go with um, Jalen Brown. Okay. Because um, obviously we we're talking about the scoring abilities. Um, because Boston Celtics is one of the deepest teams right now in the league, um, and they're very complete, best record in the league um, this season. So I think in terms of scoring abilities, it would spread out evenly. But if and this is kind of the case in the Fat Sab as well, Jalen Brown is being tasked to guard Luka Doncic. Mm, true. And I feel like it will sort of outweigh. Um, his task on scoring ability, much to the task of being Luca guard or Luca stopper. Right. So if he's up to the task, if he's up to the challenge, and if he's proven to be um, the Luca stopper, I think it will be an even greater importance or even greater responsibility. And not everyone can do that in Boston Celtics. In Boston Celtics, everyone can shoot, obviously. Very switchable. Very yep. switchable as well. But can you get the look Doncic right. with his magic and all that? So I think he will be more important that way. And Jason Tatum, as much as um, he's been a star, one of the star players in the in the team, I still think he's still sure just slight inconsistencies um, in his plays in the postseason. Mm -hmm. And um, if we're talking about stats as well, I think if we're talking about comparison between two teams, Luke Doncic being um, the young player compared to the Jason Tatum yeah. of Boston Celtics, I think when their backs are against the wall, Luka Doncic has a slight um, advantage. A bit of a slight edge, I would yeah. say. Yeah, slight edge. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Right. So, I, I would go with Jalen Brown. Yeah, me too. I think uh, we're seeing as well here in the first half how much uh, Jalen Brown is making Luka Doncic work on the defensive end mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. But now let's talk about Mavericks. Enough <laughs> Boston for one talk yeah. set. Okay, speaking of duos, mm. the Maverick has their own duos. Yeah. I mean, I think many will believe as well that uh, Luka and Kyrie is, is really sore on their back mm -hmm. carrying the team throughout the playoff run. Yeah. Many believe that. Mm -hmm. So in this finals, you know, in this series that they're going to play in the next uh, four or five games, mm -hmm. can they continue to find success relying on Kyrie and Luka? What do you think of this? Do to the more of the same in the finals? What do you think? At some extent, yes. Um, especially for clutch games because, uh, well, the stats say so. And um, if we're watching Dallas Mavericks closely, um, They've been gelling pretty well, but I think um, if you ask whether the team should rely on just those dynamics, I don't think so. And I don't think it would be the case for this Dallas Mavericks. Um, Jason Kitts, uh, um, as much as you know, he's being, in a way, not hated, but being annoyed by the um, fans, but in postseason, um, he's been working very great to, you know, to do the adjustments and all that. And some of the adjustment, if not most, is revolving not only about the dynamics between the two, but also the, the, the next man up mentality in, you know, Derek Johns Jr., PJ Washington. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought the, the freshman out of Duke in Derek Lively could, mm -hmm. you know, uh, show up when it matters Holding the most? It yeah. Exactly. So, um, as much as the, the force of those, um, you know, two players in Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving is just too great, so people can sometimes uh, overlook the Very other players. True. Um, I don't think that that would be the case for this series, especially to handle a team this deep, you know. So, um, would, would they rely on them on some extent, of course, and probably we'll get onto that if, if it all comes down to, you know, predictions and all that, because, again, slight edge would be on Dallas Mavericks if it all comes down to... Clutch which, moments. Yeah, yeah, clutch moments, right. which duo that would show up and actually carry each other's back. And um, one thing that I would... Um, point out as well about them is beyond what shows in the um, score sheets. Mm -hmm. um, it's how Kyrie Irving, um, much to um, our likeness about uh, our knowledge about him, um, he's been in all sorts of teams in Boston Celtics, mm -hmm. um, Cleveland with LeBron, right. and Brooklyn Nets in a three star concept mm -hmm. um, with uh, James Harden and Kevin Durant. And I think it's really refreshing to see how he sets back and yeah. he kind of 
uh, like oscillates between roles. Let's the game come to him and let's Luca take the yeah, front yeah, seat Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes. He can yeah. sit back sometimes, mm. but if 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 he, if he needs to show and it matters the most, yeah. he can also be dominant. We're checking out some of the highlights here okay. from the first half as well, where the Boston Celtics with about less than three minutes exactly. remaining so uh, in the first Brown, half. Right? Yeah. Correct. The uh, Celtics have 25-point lead right now behind wow. Chris Stapps Porzingis with 15 off the bench. Nice. He is blistering oh. right now. He is uh, also backed up by Jalen Brown. You called it, Mutia. 13 <laughs> points for Jalen Brown yeah. so far. Meanwhile, the only player in double digits for the Dallas Mavericks is Luka Doncic with 10, making, as you can see, they're making uh, him work very hard on the defensive end. Yeah. Now, I want to talk continuing to talk a bit about the Mavericks because they, I would argue, had the toughest path to the finals. They had to take out a star-studded LA Clippers. Uh -huh. uh, they also took out the number one seed in the West, OKC Thunder. Yeah. And then they took out the team that beat the defending champions mm -hmm. in the Minnesota Timberwolves, who also had the number one defense in the league. Yeah. But I would argue that they are now facing their toughest test. And we can see it right now. They've got their hands full, especially with yeah. first steps Porzingis back in the lineup for the Celtics. Yeah. What's it going to take for the Mavs to win the series? because we've seen that they can make adjustments from series to series. What adjustments do they have to make uh, in order to take down this uh, Boston Celtics, this powerhouse? Yeah, I mean, the sample on first half, uh, we can see the similar concept of double drags um, Luka Doncic has with um, big man as well. And, mm -hmm. and as you can see, um, Luka is very good at that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, trapping the big mans or trapping the defenders assigned to him to sort of like tailing between him, sort of pocketing, him, pocketing the defenders, right? Mm -hmm. And as you can see on the on the first half, and also um, mismatches, obviously they're, they're going to hunt mismatches to death. True, um, true. Kyrie Irving, uh, supposedly being the uh, ball handler, um, it's going to be a task for uh, Boston Celtics because they're going to, um, you know, hunt for uh, mismatches in Christopher Zing is probably off the bench and but well while he's shooting the lights out but mm. in terms of defense against a very fast players like uh, Kyrie Irving that mm -hmm. would be the case for uh, him to uh, hunt for the mismatch by the way um, Porzingis played amazing defense yeah. just now yeah. uh, ran down a fast break with a chase down block yeah. played an amazing man-to-man -man defense on Kyrie Irving of all people as well yeah 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 and oh, look out, at of, that. out of injury as well and that's that's kind of the team that he has right now um, and one of the things that I would like to point out because see Boston Celtics as per usual um, they always start with a five out mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. so I guess um, the case with with uh, Mavs I guess in terms of defensive scheme because they're so used to pack the pain area mm -hmm. and so um, coming to this series if they don't if they don't match to the five out that Boston does on especially on a perimeter shooting it's done. Yeah. It's all said and done, right? And 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 um, I would say on game one, uh, before the coaching adjustment on the next games, um, it's kind of a gamble whether you want to pack the pain or whether you want to chase um, the perimeter um, right. shooters. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I mean... Yeah, Celtics are making them pay from the yep. perimeter the yeah. pay. and they're giving up plenty of uh, um, offensive rebounds as well on the yes. Mavs side. Uh, exactly. But we were talking about defense, mm -hmm. right? Paul mentioned defense yeah. where the Mavericks beat the league's number one defensive team, the Wolves. Yeah. And right now, uh, people say that the Celtics has an easier path Mm. to the finals mm. and the Mavericks. But now we are seeing things differently. What, which team do you think has the more edge on the defensive side in this series? Mm. I think um, as much as uh, Mavericks has been so great on a postseason basketball, and you would argue, and I, I definitely agree, and I think NBA fans in general would agree that Wild Wild West is a thing and it's such a bloodbath, compared to Celtics. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they had it easy, easy, mm -hmm. but for what, admittedly, there's a lot of um, their opponents that, are, that got injured. Um, but in terms of defense, I think a slight edge would be um, to Boston Celtics, just because um, they showed up in, in um, regular season. And well, historically, I think stats would say, and I think this is how um, the term offense wins your game and defense wins mm -hmm. your championship holds true mm -hmm. because um, six of, and this is very interesting stat, I would say, uh, six of the ten teams, so it's ten teams for the past decades that wins the championship, they're always on a top five defense. Correct. Right, and so, and that's including Golden State Warriors, uh, 2017. Oh, Warriors are amazing yeah. defensively. Yeah. when they beat Boston Celtics as well. Mm -hmm. So I think um, when Kevin Looney was just so yeah. immensely, like, dominant on the pen area. So I think um, defense still going through 
holds the power for this kind of matchup, especially um, uh, Boston Celtics because, yeah, they're, they're just great on both ends and that's... Well, let's not forget, they are the number two defense in the league, right they behind are. the Minnesota exactly. Timberwolves as well. So, you mentioned earlier about the depth of the Celtics. If you were to take the seven best players of the series, mm -hmm. I would argue that you would put Luka and Kyrie as the two best players. Mm -hmm. Then the next five would all pretty much come from the Celtics. You have Jason, Jalen, yeah. you have Derek White, Drew Holiday, Kristaps Porzingis. Yep. I would say those five are better than any of the remaining Dallas Mavericks players. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, do you go for superstar power or depth? Right. In 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 a general seven game series, I would always give for depth. Okay. Right. Um, because again, seven game series means, but this doesn't say that you have to play like all of your 10, 12 players out, right? Because coming to the playoffs, that means like it's the rotations shrinking. get shorter. Exactly. Um, but. This series, I guess, I have to go with the clutch of the stars just because their forces are just too great yeah. to be ignored. Uh, but I think uh, the way we put it into choices and the way the narrative works in the NBA right now, I think I would say I slightly disagree on how you would count out Dallas Mavericks as a two-star player team just because, um, yeah, they're just the, the, the next four to five players are also as And their great. chemistry is really their good. Their chemistry is really yeah. good. And I think uh, postseason, it's a combination of the players and also um, the coaching adjustment, which I think Jason Kidd has, slight, um, has a slight advantage because Drew Moses lists his first uh, trip to the finals. Yep. Um, mentality works and yep. um, you cannot really deny that. It's a trick yeah. question too. I mean, it depends how close these games yeah. are. If it's a close game, I'm going to go with the superstars. Yeah. Right? The superstars, exactly. Right. Because, yeah. yeah, the two teams are just, they're both equally great in terms Absolutely. of if we're talking about superstars or depth. I agree. I think they are. That's what I'm saying. They both uh, do deserve belonging in the finals. Uh, yeah, yeah. But finally, sure. last but not least, <laughs> okay, since 2009, the NBA has been a three-point shooting league. Mm, mm. Steph Curry, right? One of them. Yeah. And here's some stats. Boston Celtics has eight players on their roster mm -hmm. who made more than 100 threes this season. That's right. Meanwhile, the Mavs is shooting a blistering 39.5% from the corner trees during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Now, the big question is, who will win the battle from beyond the arc? I'm going to go with Boston on this one. Yeah. I think for sure. I yeah. think... Um, not naming the, the sample that we saw in the first half, but they just been very consistent mm -hmm. um, on trees. But then again, it's like, it, it's like it can be good, it could be bad because if, we're, if, we're, if you're just relying on trees, live by the tree, die by the tree, correct? Live by the tree, die by the tree. You either shoot the lights out or yeah. you're, you're just you're done. Yeah, you're done. Right? not scoring at all. Exactly, but I think that's not going to be the case with Boston Celtics. But if we're talking about trees, obviously Boston Celtics take the uh, advantage just because they're very consistent. Mm. And um, I think uh, the way it is um, because what we see on the postseason, the two times that they are losing is because because of the bad three-point shooting nights mm -hmm. true. Um, against Heat at the time. Um, they are having Heat, they are having, you know, the, 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 the best, I think, The uh, best in their has, history. Yeah. 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 Best Correct. in franchise history. Correct. And Cavs as well, yeah. um, when they lost to Cavs. It was also because of the uh, bad three-point shooting night. So Celtics will take um, slight advantage from that, I believe. I think so, too. Um, I think it's really hard to defend so many shooters, especially when uh, big men like Al Horford and Kirstap Porzingis. We saw Kirstap Porzingis. from hit 30 it. feet. Yeah, the, so yeah, it's insane. really hard to guard. Yeah. Um, so knowing now that we're at the half, 63 to 42 is the score for the Boston oh. Celtics. But again, 20-point leads can vanish in an instant yep. when yeah. it comes to the NBA. Yeah. I'm surprised that the Celtics have reached this number at halftime time because the finals usually the score lines a bit lower yeah. do you think that the uh, Dallas Mavericks will make any adjustments and do you think they'll be have a chance to win game to steal game one on the road game one <laughs> game one I don't think so because <laughs> yeah um it looks it's like, TD Garden baby yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's and, one of them it, it looks like it's Celtics um, game to win yeah. um, for game one but if we're talking about coaching adjustment which means uh, the next two three games um, I think Jason Kidd will have something up his sleeves. Yep. Um, and so that's why in terms of slight itch, um, if we're talking about close games especially, I would still go for uh, Dallas Mavericks. Okay. And, and yeah, yeah, I think wow. he would, uh, they would steal the game. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually going to say this is going to be a much closer score line than at the half. I think that uh, Luca is going to turn it up a little bit more in the second okay. half. And I think it's going to be a little bit closer. And I yeah. do believe that the Mavericks can steal one of the first two road games yep. in Boston. They what do you think, the, Ralphie? They have the capability to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be awesome if uh, Jason Kidd 
uh, win the finals as a coach. Oh, yeah, and yeah, as a player at the same right. time with the Mavs. Exactly. It's, and um, It's going to be a crazy story. I mean, in terms of stats as well, I think Luca is playing better when his back is against the wall. Yeah. yeah. So many would argue you have to lose 2-0 first. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> to bring to wake him Luka up. Magic. <laughs> exactly. Well, either right. way, there's going to be one 25-year-old superstar <laughs> winning yeah. his very first NBA championship that's by the insane. end of this series. Mutia, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. Thank you very much. For for sports guys. talk. Enjoy the rest of game one. And for all those catching it at home as well, uh, we will bring you all of the highlights and results from game one on tomorrow morning's program. In the meantime, though, we're going to take another short break, but I'll have recap from other sports news when we return here on the Sea Morning Show.